Hello, friends, and welcome back to Malicious Compliance Stories. Every action has consequences that our OP's neighbor probably didn't expect. Well, now our OP doesn't have a neighbor, and we'll tell you how it happened right after a short pause. So don't forget to subscribe to our channel if you're new here, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new video every single day. Here we go. Don't park in my space. This happened a few years ago when I was living in Burbank, California. For a variety of reasons, I couldn't park in my space and instead parked on the street, which was in a good area. Parking was allowed at all times for residents of Burbank only. The spot right in front of my house was always available, but it was under a tree full of birds and your car would be covered in turds even after a few hours. Naturally, I didn't want to park there and would instead leave my car in front of the house two doors down, the nearest place with no tree. One day, the snooty owner meets me as I'm getting into my car. He wants me to keep clear of their space. I explained that public space is not theirs. He then threatened to do something to my car. The police went over there after I called them and found they were using the house for their business of renting camera equipment. That was against the law, and they had to cease operations immediately and get the F out of Burbank within a month. Further, everyone there was parking on street as non-residents of the city were in violation and all received tickets as well. Every action carries a consequence that you probably did not anticipate, Mr. Neighbor. It was a most satisfying week. And now you're parked in a space in his memory, and he can never get rid of you. And our second story. I know the owner. I spent four years working at a hardware store while in college and was reminded of this particular mishap during an exchange with a coworker the other day. I figured it fits well here. We've all heard this or some variation of this at one time or another. I know the manager. I know, insert name here. While the hardware store I used to work at was a family business, four brothers owned two stores between them all. The one I worked at was a father-son deal. The father, one of the initial brothers mentioned above, was the owner, and his son worked as the manager. I was running a register and had been working there less than a year when I was confronted by a very angry man who I'll refer to as Vam. Something to note, the owner and manager shared a rather easily recognizable last name. For the sake of anonymity, I'm going to change them a bit, but I'll refer to them as Bill, owner, and Chuck, manager, Carmichael. Easily recognizable last name. Vam. Plops down a bunch of plumbing parts, pipe, glue, etc. on my counter. I want to return all of this. None of it worked. Me. Okay, can I see your receipt, please? Vam. Angry stare. I don't have it. Me. Noticing that the return is going to be for a large chunk of money. Okay, let me call my manager real quick. Vam. Inaudible grumbling. Manager. Sir... I'll take you over here at this register so he can clear out the line behind you. Vam. More inaudible grumbling. I proceeded to chunk out the line pretty quickly while keeping a loose ear on the conversation between Vam and my manager. It grew heated eventually, and Vam yelled something about wanting to see a manager, which was funny because the manager was telling him to pound sand. Once the line was gone, I had a front row seat to the argument. Vam. They let me return this stuff at the other location. Manager. I'm sorry, I can't take these. Some are used, some aren't from here. I have no record of the purchase, and I'm not the other location. Vam. I know the owner. I'll go right to him with this. I know Bill. Carmichael. Manager. Okay. Vam. I mean it. What's your name? Manager. Looks at his own name tag. Chuck. Vam. What's your last name? Manager. Carmichael. Vam. Blank staring as the gears turn. He grabbed his crap, stammered a few curses, and left. It was early in the day, and the owner rolled in a few hours later before lunch. We all had a good laugh out of it. Best part, the manager had gotten Vam's name from his credit card. Not only did the owner not know him, but he was banned from the other store. Probably earned it. The last part's my favorite. I love it when management slash ownership doesn't give in to the demands of ridiculous people and instead bans them from the store. 
And our next story. Written up for not following work schedule. I comply to the fullest. Cast our me equals cook one, Bob equals cook two, Mia equals supervisor, boss. Our workplace follows a bi-weekly work schedule. I'm one of three cooks that work. I usually work four to five days a week, interchanging Friday and Saturday, 11-hour closing shift, and Tuesday and Thursday, six-hour closing with Bob. As Friday and Saturday are the most busiest, we close at 11 instead of 10 as most days. With agreement from our boss, we would switch every schedule. The schedule will be sent in text and a physical copy at work. Bob was scheduled to work this time, as I gave notice a month ahead for those days off. Boss likes to copy and paste schedules, screws up by posting the physical copy, stating I'm supposed to work, and text copy as my days off. First week of Mia following the physical copy, she calls me that day that I'm 30 minutes late and asking where I am. Confused, I explain the situation that I have my day off and can't come in. She interjects saying I was scheduled to work and that I'll be getting a warning for a no-show. The next day, I get a call from boss about my no-show. He doesn't care that the schedule was wrong and not matching, tells me if I miss today, I'll be written up and that you must follow the schedule at work. He can't schedule anyone else as nobody wants extra shifts besides me, Bob, Cook 3, and can't hire anyone as not enough business. Next month rolls around, Bob's quitting and has already given his two-week notice. The new schedule shows up, and I noticed the schedules don't match. Bob was assigned to work Friday and Saturday when he already has quit by then. So after closing Thursday night, I muted my phone from work and head home to have a few drinks and a J. Come back to work Sunday, and boss is waiting. Goes at me for missing work, and now he had to fill in for me as nobody else could. I just told him, I was just following the work schedule exactly. Oh man, he was furious. But after calming down, he 180 degrees as he had no one the next week to cover those days. I just said I couldn't work those days as I get back to work just as the lunch rush comes. What makes my story even better is next week comes, I'm at my mom's work friends party. I see my boss's wife there also. I meet her and have a short convo that led to asking her where boss was she said he couldn't make it as he needed to cover some shifts at work. I replied, too bad. He probably should have scheduled someone. Where were you this time? Oh, out drinking with your wife? Hope things were okay at the restaurant. And our last story. Boss denies deserved raise, so I make him regret it. September of 2019 is when I'm laid off by a former boss who was ousting people in order to hire her friends and start an embezzling scheme as I later found out. At the time, I didn't really need the second income as my wife has a great job and we took the opportunity to do some home renovations. Well, in March 2020, I had the foresight to know that the COVID issue was going to come soon, so I landed a role as a controller basically master accountant for a modest property management company here in East Cleveland. It was a lower paying controller role, but I knew this was the next step in my career and it'd benefit me in the long run to have controller on my resume, so I took the gig. Fast forward to June of 2021, when we found out we were expecting our first child. I knew I needed to request a raise, so I took multiple weeks to do market research on my role, experience and company size, I even reached out to some recruiters I was connected with to confirm the salary range I should request to be in line with market standards. I won't give you the exact dollar figures, but I requested a raise of 20k in order to get me up to the 10th percentile of market standards with all relevant factors. I didn't even ask for the average salary, just the 10th percentile. I did all this one week prior to my late one-year review. Boss, also the owner, said he was disappointed in my letter requesting such a large increase and how sudden it was. I stood my ground and said the raise was modest when compared to the market here in Cleveland. I was told the raise was not in the budget. Mind you that, as the controller, I create the damn budgets. I know good and well where our financials stand and I knew my raise would be a drop in the bucket. My boss is greedy and our turnover was way too high because of this, but I digress. 
He reluctantly gives me a raise that was pathetic and not anywhere near the 20k requested. He gives me a dollar figure that the accounting department must stay under and says it's my job to adhere to this. This is important later. At the time, I didn't have another option, so I shut my mouth and planned my revenge. Two weeks later, my AP person quit due to not getting a raise. No surprise there. Boss brings in his wife to work 20 hours a week until we fill the role. His wife is perfectly capable and quite smart, so I appreciated her offering to help. What I did not appreciate was seeing what he paid her on the next payroll. She was being paid 25% more than what I was being paid, and she only worked 20 hours compared to my 50. And when compared to the prior AP person, she was being paid 70% more. This fueled my fire even more. We find a new AP person in September, but my boss keeps his wife on payroll as a consultant and continues to pay her 125% of my salary to do literally nothing. My internal fire is now white hot. It's now February 2022, and I've just received an offer letter from a larger manufacturing company that pays great, has great benefits, and allows me to work a ton from home. I draft a letter to my boss for my resignation, fueled by his instructions about staying within the defined budget for the accounting department. I'm cutting a salary to meet that figure. My salary. I gave two weeks notice because it wouldn't look good to my new employer if I just quit. I made sure that month-end closing was started but not finished, made sure that my last day was one day prior to figuring payroll, and that all my intellectual property that helped with reporting and SOPs was deleted. We were also wrapping up 2021 year-end with our CPA, but I didn't really feel like working my butt off to finish that. He didn't speak to me for the last two weeks. It's now late April and I learned this morning that everyone under me has quit because they did not want to work for him after seeing how he dealt with me. I don't feel bad for him. He talks the talk about treating people fair and justly, but it's damn time someone shows him that he doesn't walk the walk. Hey guys, thank you all for watching the video. I'll see you in the next one.